A property needing repairs is not the only reason that you can potentially buy it at a discount. Carlos, this is your show. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, folks. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I'm your host, James Wise, and this is a show on Holton Wise TV where we work together, right? We got all the education. We got the crazy stuff. We got the Tennis from Hell show. Fucked up shit's happening. Uh, we got the general finance show with Bailey and her team doing all that jazz. Uh, but when you guys get down to the nitty gritty and you really want to work together and start your real estate portfolio, this is where you come. This is where we work together one on one, right? So, HoltonWise.com, property search for sale tab, MLS search and analysis show. You could order yourself a package and work together with me in the same way my dude Carlos is doing, right? And a little bit about you, Carlos. You're an investor. You're living in Georgia. You're not new to the game. You got some properties in Little Rock. And we're trying to build you a portfolio here in Cleveland. And you're trying to do bird deals, okay? Bird deals, guys. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. Essentially, uh, the, the idea behind the Burr strategy or the Burr method or the Burr concept, whatever, whatever you want to call it, right? You buy a property that's distressed because it needs repairs. You do those repairs, and your goal is to get the property to appraise for more money than what you paid in the acquisition and the repairs, right? And, Carlos, you wanted to do uh, some Burr deals, but <clears throat> you gave me another little... Uh, a little tidbit in, in our last interactions, right? That's the way this works. I, I do a show, if, you know, Carlos, you buy, uh, you bought a bigger package, right, folks? If you guys buy the bigger packages, which is what I recommend, because it takes time to get these deals to go through, not every deal is going to go through, right? If I can leave you with anything in relation to how to become a real estate investor, it's a numbers game. It's a volume game, right? You don't make an offer on one house and then you get that house. That's not how this game works, right? It's a volume thing, right? Just like uh, back in the day, right? Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, the motherfuckers hitting all those home runs, right? What did they also do besides set home run records? I'm pretty sure they were setting uh, strikeout records, right? You got to swing the bat a lot of times if you're trying to hit it out of the park, so to speak, okay? So real estate is very much the same way. So in between videos, Carlos, you gave me new information. You said, hey, I was talking to my lender, and I want the property's ARV, that's the after repair value, I want that to be $95,000 or more, okay? Now, that sounds fine. That sounds well and good, Carlos. I understand where you're coming from, but here's the thing about the Cleveland market, and that's, you know, that's part of what this show's about, right? It's about setting expectations, when we're trying to do bird deals, guys, we need to have distressed properties, okay? Um, when we look at the Cleveland housing stock, right, we have a lot of single families, and then we have fewer multifamilies, right? And what you want to do, Carlos, is you want to get multifamily only, right? And you want to be in the $95,000 or more price range, right? So what that does is that positions you like in B or so class neighborhoods typically, right? High C, low B. As we move up in quality of neighborhood, right? Like if we're in the D class areas, we're going to have a lot more distressed properties because they're tougher neighborhoods. People that own the properties, you know, usually have less money because it, it, it took them less money to acquire the property in the first place. And then the tenants, of course, and the neighborhood is just tougher. So more often than not, if we have a nicer, more expensive area and, a, you know, lower cost area, more people are going to be distressed over here than they will be over here. In addition to that, Carlos, you wanted to do multifamily as opposed to single family. So you've limited our inventory twice, right? We've limited it by going to multifamily, and we've also limited it by going with the nicer neighborhoods. There's just not going to be that many uh, distressed properties fitting that criteria. In addition to just in general, right? If you talk about the fact that there's less multifamily than single family, that's one thing. But also 
the landlords that own multifamilies are going to be less likely to be distressed than the landlords that own single families, right? Say you're a single family landlord, an accidental landlord. You got one tenant. That tenant goes crazy, fucks your house up, right? Well, now you're just fucked, okay? Boom. One tenant, you had one shot at it, it went to shit, you're fucked, all right? Say you're that same landlord who's got no fucking clue what you're doing, and your one tenant fucks shit up and fucks your shit up, and, you know, you're just fucked with that unit. You still have another unit which is bringing in money, right? So you're only 50% fucked, okay? So you're less likely to be extremely distressed. And when we're doing these type of bird deals, we need distressed sellers in distressed situations, right? So because of all of those things, Carlos, the inventory for these distressed properties to be able to pull off these bird deals for you uh, and have the ARV be that high, right? Very few and far between, which is what brings me to this property. 12609 Astor Avenue, Cleveland, 44135. Just hit the market six days ago. Now, the price says $57,000, but here is what we have, right? And this is like the theme of the, the video, right? This is what I wanted to talk about. Outside of the properties being messed up, needing repairs, you could potentially get properties for lower prices for other reasons, like one-off situations, which is what we have here, okay? This is... A duplex in the Cleveland market, we have a ton of up-down duplexes, and we have a ton of, not a ton of side-by-side, -side, but fewer side-by-side -side duplexes. Number one, I always love the side-by-side -side duplexes because no one's living above or below you, so you get bigger rents, longer tenancy, right? I love them. If you ever have the opportunity to buy side-by-side -side versus up-down, do it, right? But what this is, this is different. This is actually two separate homes, right? These are two completely separate parcels, right? Most of the time, it's just one property has one parcel number, one tax ID number, and it's just one home. These are technically two separate homes. This one's available for 57. This one's available for 57. The same guy owns them both. He's selling them both. This listing, there's another listing exactly like this with the same pictures and everything, right? They're trying to sell them either separately or together. So you can buy them both for $114,000, right? And the fact that it's goofy like that, that, my friend, is where I think we can come in and we can get it for a low value. First of all, let's see what we're getting, though. I just want to show you uh, the photos quickly, right? This is the, the empty unit. The other one is already occupied at $750. And then this particular one that you're looking at, the photos, that's going to rent for $900. So we're able to bring in $1,650 or $19,800 a year. And, like, dude, this is it's its, its own single-family house. I mean, that's what it is. And then it's already renovated, dude. The, the kitchen looks great. Like, we really don't need to do much of anything, if anything, to get a tenant in here at 900 Like, this is just solid property. We got the hardwoods. You know, everything is fresh. Everything is clean. I really don't think you're going to need to do anything. Separate basements, because, of course, we're dealing with separate houses. Right here, you can see we have a fully updated electric panel, right? Everything is is looking fresh, right? Like that furnace, dude, that is not an old furnace at all. It's probably five years or newer. This might be a little on the older side. That might be close to like 10 years old. They only last about 15 years, but they're only a grand to replace when you need to replace a hot water tank, right? So we got really nice stuff. And then as far as the other unit, they didn't have any additional photos for us because that one's already got a 10 in there at 750 but that would be a $900 unit as well. So the property itself is very, very nice. So you're like, well, dude, how the hell do I get it for a discount? If it's so nice, I believe you can go in and since you're trying to burr, you're willing, ready, willing and able to pay cash. I believe we could probably go in and pay cash for this a hundred thousand dollars and pick them both up. The reason being right. The seller's trying to sell like one property to him. It probably feels like one property, like it's connected, but it's really not. It's two parcels, right? which is nice on the the appraisal side for us, number one. Number two, as far as the value of the appraisal, it's sucky uh, on the seller side dealing with the appraisal because the fact that it's actually two properties, we need to get two appraisals. We would need to get two separate mortgages. We would need to write up two contracts. You'd have to pay double the closing costs, right? These things 
are all a pain in the ass. And, like, especially if you could only get owner-occupants to buy the other one, the seller would have to deal with finding two separate buyers, right? The whole thing would be a pain. And the majority of people that buy real estate, right, they go in utilizing a loan, right? So the amount of issues and hassle the seller would have to deal with is just going to be doubled because we don't get to just do it simply like a normal duplex where it's just one appraisal, one loan, all that jazz, right? It's two completely separate purchases. So with you paying cash, we could take all that confusion and turn it into something simple for them, just one simple transaction, which would be 100000 And, dude, if you pick this up at $100,000, you are making buku bucks. Because even before we got the other tenant in there paying uh, the market rate, which is 900 if we just got the empty unit filled with the existing tenant of that six. 1850 dude 862 is going to be your noi that's about ten thousand dollars a year right so if you bought it at the 100k that is a 10.3 cap and here's where it gets good i know your particular lender wants wants to have the arvb 95k or more so i think make it attractive for the seller try to buy it cash right and then after you own it, you've already got the thing. Then I think we approach your lender, try to get them to appraise uh, and do the refinance. Maybe they will allow you, since it's just a refinance, maybe they will allow you to do it in one loan. You'd have a value, in my opinion, of about 120000 because I think independently each of these two properties will appraise for sixty k. If you were able to pull that off, that means... They would give you back ninety thousand of your original hundred thousand dollar investment, meaning you only got ten k into the deal, and that would position this thing at a fifty eight percent cash on cash return. Now, if your lender won't combine it, and your lender has already said he won't loan you anything under an ARV of ninety five k, I have a whole list of lenders, sales at holtonwise dot com, and I have several lenders on that list, right? Anybody who wants that list, sales at holdenwise.com. You send an email to sales at holdenwise.com, we'll get you the list. I have several lenders on that list who do not need you to have a property valued at more than 95000 They would have no problem writing two mortgages on two $60,000 properties, which is essentially what I think we have. So make it easy on the seller to get the discount, 100 k and then later when you have – all the time in the world, since you already own the asset, you don't have to deal with the seller or anything. That's when you try to get the appraisal to separate it out with my lenders if your guy won't play ball. And we should be able to get each of these homes to individually appraise for 60 k meaning that bank will give you back that 90 right? So just by getting it for that small little discount off the list price, 100 k versus 114 k that would be the target here. And the fact that I know when they do do two appraisals, if that's the route we have to take, I think it'll be about 60 for each. That's how you create that value. That's how you get in there with that little wedge. And that's how you end up with only $10,000 down and you don't have to do any renovations. If that makes sense for you, just reply to the private email link and my team will begin writing up the offers for you. If you're not feeling this strategy, let me know your thoughts on what you want to do next since in addition to giving you the information on this property, I also laid out to you the inventory shortage we have uh, in the Cleveland market with properties, you know, being multifamily and above that 95K rate. And let me know what direction you'd like me to take on your next video. That's all I've got for today's show. All the new viewers who just stumbled upon Holton Wise TV through Google or however the hell you got here, do yourself a solid and smash that subscribe button because Holton Wise TV is real estate investing made easy. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.